Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness Coaching Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to the How May I Serve You podcast, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clientele by asking them, how may I serve you? And today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fit. Get Up and Get Fit will be providing students with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guest today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people per year. And today's guest is Dr. Mar Marinelli Garb. Did I, did I pronounce your name right? Make sure I pronounce your name right. Close. Manelini. Manelini. Okay. Manelini. Okay. Manelini. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Manelini Garf. So, Dr. Garf, welcome to the show. Thank you. Awesome. So, Dr. Garf is known as America's only career coach for South Asian professional women. She is a best selling author, multiple time career changer, and has worked as a physician, leadership coach, and business professional in world renowned organizations. Having had to maneuver her career success without a mentor that looked like her or had similar experiences to hers, Dr. Garv has become that mentor to South Asian professionals, helping them master the careers so they can achieve the ultimate success that they didn't even know was possible for them. Dr. Garv, welcome. That's amazing right there. Amazing. <laughs> great, great, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So, Dr. Garb, let's um let's dive into your your lifestyle, right? Where are you from? How did you get started? Give me the two minute version. Okay, sure. So I um, I'm originally from India. I come from a small town called Nagpur uh, in Maharashtra. It's the same state as Mumbai. Uh, okay. Most people are from Mumbai. I'm from that same state. Um, I came to the U.S. eons ago. <laughs> I was um, I was practicing as a doctor in India, and then I decided I wanted to come here, do something more, and okay. um, got my master's in health administration here. Uh, worked in some amazing organizations here, um, and uh, you know, one thing led to another. I realized that I wasn't as fulfilled in my career. And I needed support, uh, but I did not get that support because there weren't many people who were coaches who were um, coaching women just like me, who look like me, who speak mm -hmm. like me, resonate with me, and uh, who have been suffered with being underpaid, passed over for promotions, and never saying anything because of the culture that we were raised, mm -hmm. uh, which is to accept anything we were given and be grateful for that. So when it came to our careers, we brought that same behavior to work, mm -hmm. uh, kept saying yes to uh, everything, taking on more. And I did not have anyone to help me with that. So I decided that I wanted to become that coach so I can help other women just like me to speak up and uh, really get to the next level, even if their bosses did not think they were leadership material. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's that's when I uh, started my coaching business, and uh, um, it's it's great. It's great to be doing what I'm doing. Awesome, awesome. So, how was the transition from being a doctor to becoming a coach? All right, because I know that's a completely different arenas, right? How is that tradition from being a, you know, a, a, a doctor, a, a professional in, in the medical field to becoming an actual coach? That's a great question, Thomas. Uh, things are changing now in India, but mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was at that age where you make that decision of what you want to become when you grow up, I made that decision to become a doctor because uh, that was the expectation of uh, parents, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know uh, people of that generation that you can either be a doctor or an engineer. Everything else is not good. <laughs> it won't give you the, uh, the stability. It won't give you that status. So I decided to become a doctor. So early on, I knew that that was not what I wanted to be. Mm. So I was always uh, unfulfilled. So I was on this quest to figure out who I really wanted to be, what I really wanted to do in life. And um, as I came to the U.S., um, 
you know, the first thing that I got into was I did not switch my field completely. So I was still in healthcare. Okay. And um, I was working as a hospital administrator and as a leadership coach, uh, helping leaders from, uh, you know, the front life, uh, front line to uh, the executive suite. Uh, helping them understand business processes and how to become efficient and how to be leaders. Mm -hmm. So switching my career wasn't painful at all because I knew that I did not want to be a doctor. So I knew that much. I just did not know what else I wanted to do. Yeah, so I fell, yeah. So I fell in love with process improvement, uh, uh, helping people really take on leadership, show up as leaders. I did that for about five to six years. And then I got this opportunity to work um, in a business school as a business professor. And I taught in the MBA, MBOE program. And again, the theme was coaching, mm -hmm. right? Teaching and coaching. And I realized that even with multiple degrees, people still did not feel confident. They were afraid to speak up. And no matter what degree you get, what school you go to, Nobody teaches you how to speak up. Nobody teaches mm. you how to, how to truly be confident. And I'm not yeah. talking about the fake it till you make it kind of confidence, mm -hmm. uh, but the real confidence where you know yourself so well, you know your limiting beliefs and your limiting patterns. Yeah. And once you start knowing yourself, then you know how to lead differently. And... Uh, that was what really excited me to pursue this further. So mm. I applied everything that I learned, you know, from interviewing multiple hundreds of uh, female leaders who were uh, successful, but also most importantly, happy and fulfilled in their careers. And then mm. I looked at my own journey and I, I learned a lot of things from my own experiences and I put everything together, I packaged it, uh, applied it to my own life, and I started thriving in my career. And I thought, well, let me teach this to other women. And mm. I chose women because I'm a woman and I understand women much better. Uh, yeah. oh, even though I work with men uh, too, but uh, the female clientele is bigger than male clientele. But that is something that um, lit me up. There you go. <laughs> I felt that I have found my purpose and that's what I've started doing. And um, it's been amazing to see uh, these women who work with me, you know, they are negotiating anywhere from 10K to 70K more. They are getting promoted and they are so confident and they are, um, you know, getting a seat at the right table and are becoming decision makers. And so now I feel that I finally figured out uh, what I truly enjoy. So long answer to your question, <laughs> you know, that's that the journey has been. You know what? That was an amazing, amazing answer right there because you took your your pain, right? You took your obstacle and you, you turned it around and you made it a business, right? So now you're able to work with women that went through similar experiences as you and you're able to guide them towards success. That's amazing. And just the fact that you have found your calling that's 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 great it takes it takes people so much time to find out what they're good at to find out their calling and you have you have done it within a within a few years yes 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 and that's one of the things that i teach uh women also uh so that they don't have to spend years to figure out what they are truly passionate about so i give them a shortcut and help them get there sooner uh, but, you know, just like your journey, too, it was so interesting to learn about your own journey and, you know, how you dedicated to the cause uh, that, that you help executives with. Yes, indeed. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. I mean, I know you, you already highlighted um, your clientele, right? You talk, you're talking clientele, which are South Asian women, right? So that's your main focus, your main focus right there, correct? With, in terms of clientele? Uh, yes. South Asian women and uh, women of color. And uh, because... I think we bring, we, we, the moment people look at us, they see that we are different, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So uh, South Asian women specifically, because I am South Asian, mm -hmm. but uh, women of color, because, uh, you know, I resonate with the challenges that every woman of color goes through. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, women of color, South Asian women, and anybody really, you know, who resonates with uh, what I have to share. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, representation matters, right? And there are so many people, like, like I mentioned before, there are, um, they are, they are underneath the radar, right? They have the credentials, they have the experience, but they're underneath the radar and they don't know when to speak up because they, they don't have that voice, right? And yeah. now, now they have a coach to rely on. They have a, a coach like you to, to not only motivate, because I know motivation, it's a, it's a, it's a taboo word, but they have a coach to, to draw them out of that, out of that space towards open air. Yeah, Thomas, it it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when I get women on the call and they tell me they have 20, 25 years of experience and they're living paycheck to paycheck because mm. they do not speak up in meetings. So they are not seen as leaders. They do not negotiate what they truly deserve. And they try to compensate their lack of confidence or not knowing how to speak up by overworking. So now they're overworked. They're working 60 to 70 hours a week, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, mm. unfilled, unfulfilled in their career. And they bring that stress home. So now mm. their children are affected because they snap at them. They mm. don't have the time for their children or for their partner. Mm. And they're just miserable. And it breaks my heart. And this is not how career should be done. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So... I want you to walk me through this um, process right now, right? What's your coaching style, right? When, you, when you're working with these women, I know they are normally um, might be timid. Um, what's your coaching style? Like, how do you coach them? It's a very simple process. You know, it's not easy, but it's simple. Um, number one, uh, the first thing I help them with is get them clarity. Mm -hmm. Get them clarity on what do what do they truly want for themselves, and uh, because for so many years they really did not get that envi environment mm -hmm. to grow, to be visible, to be seen and heard, they have decided to make their dream smaller. Mm. And the first thing I do with them is to really help them get, get clear on what they truly want. Mm -hmm. And if they are underplaying, I help them expand uh, their horizon and really, without any constraint, think about what they truly want. Okay. Then the next thing we do is we deep dive into, well, if that's your dream, what has been holding you back? What mm. is the root cause? And like I said earlier, I don't believe in fake it till you make it. I believe mm -hmm. in make it and make it. <laughs> You're practical. I like that. Right. Because if you do not understand what the root cause is, anything else that you do, right, you do voice modulation, you improve your posture, you change the tone of your voice, it's just putting Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. Mm. Right. So if you do not really understand where is that wounding coming from, right, why is it that you're so timid? Why is it that you are invisible? Why is it that you do not speak up in meetings? So we get to the core of that. Then I help them um, overcome uh, whatever is holding them back. And then I teach them strategies on how to really show up in those meetings. Mm. But that, that's how that process is. And in this process, I tell them you do not need an, a, a, another degree. You do not need another certification. <laughs> you do not need to take a break. You do not need to switch your job because that's yeah. what they do, right? I'm so miserable. Maybe I just need a break mm. and maybe I should get, uh, you know, and, and take another job. Then they take another job and they see that same pattern. Yeah. So I help them break that cycle completely so that they can finally feel free and confident and happy once and for all and never undersell themselves or compromise themselves. Yes, indeed. The doctor has spoken. The doctor has diagnosed the, <laughs> the disorder. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Garb, I see you working. <laughs> right. You cannot, you cannot take a Tylenol, you know, if you're, uh, if you're uh, on life support, right? Exactly. <laughs> if you're dealing with cancer, you know, because self-doubt is like cancer. It takes over your work life, your uh, personal life and family, right? 
So you cannot treat that with a Tylenol. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you need a lot more intensive care than that. <laughs> there you go. You, you dive in deep and wide. There you go. Going deep and wide. You're diagnosing. You get into, the, like you say, the root cause, the root cause of the problem. You're not using a bandit effect. You're going deep, all right? You're going through every cell membrane. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there we you go. Know. So, um, Dr. Garth, if someone were looking for a coach, right, mm -hmm. what traits would you advise for them to look for? That's, that's such a great question, Thomas. And it, this is a dilemma for a lot of people because there are so many coaches out there, so many gurus out there. Here's my advice. You should look for someone who has walked in your shoes. Mm. They have been in the muck. They have been miserable. They had been struggling. And they have applied the strategies that they teach to their own situation and have walked out of it becoming massively successful. Mm. Because if they haven't walked your path, you're not going to get much value out of it because there are a lot of people, you know, who will teach you, um, you know, all the techniques. Maybe there are out there in HBR, you know, Harvard Business Review Journal or, you know, somewhere else. And they just take those strategies, put them together and create a program. And that can take you only so far. But if someone has actually experienced what you have been through, you know, maybe your culture, maybe your upbringing, maybe, you know, you came uh, as an immigrant, right? It's a, it's a very different kind of challenge. Mm. So you want to look at someone who has, you know, been through that journey and has come out successfully on the other side, because only then you, you will get uh, the outcome that you're looking for, because this coach truly understands you. Yeah. Keyword. The coach truly understands because the coach has been where you were before, walked in your footstep, understands your experience. This is why, um, I mean, culture is, is important, right? Because a person that's well cultured, they understand the nuances of that culture, of that person, right? So mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. It, it definitely makes sense. Those are some great, great advice right there, Dr. Garf. So Dr. Garf, now we're at the point of the podcast where I get to hear your story, right? Um, I love stories, right? This is the storytelling portion of the podcast. So I want you to tell us a story where you help to elevate and take one of your, your coaching clients above and beyond, right? Towards the success. Um, describe, describe in details, Paint me the picture. All right. I, I want to live vicariously through you and, and your client right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are so many stories. It's hard to pick one, but uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. And this is, um, you know, at the very beginning of my uh, coaching, uh, career coaching career, uh, this woman uh, that I worked with, uh, she was uh, a supervisor for about 20 years. And she got uh, an advanced uh, business degree, uh, not just MBA, but an advanced business degree. And despite that, she felt that I need a leadership program, you know, I because I, I, I really want to become a leader. And that itself broke my heart because, you know, that advanced business degree program had everything in it mm -hmm. uh, to help you become a leader and influence and make an impact. But see, when you are in that space where you don't feel that confidence, where you feel that you're not enough, where you have all those limiting beliefs, you're afraid to speak up, you're really own up your power and shine your light and you're playing really small. When you are in that space, no matter how many degrees you have, no many how many uh, alphabets you have in the front of your name, no, many, no matter how many certifications or years of experience you have, you are not going to get there because somewhere you feel you're not enough. So we worked together and uh, she, she first thing I told her was that you do not need another leadership program, right? And then we went through that process of where she wants to be. And she had amazing, an amazing dream for herself. 
and not just professionally, but also personally to be closer to her daughters, to be closer to her parents, but she was living far away from them. So personally also, she wasn't very happy and mm -hmm. professionally, of course she wasn't. And then she got so clear on what she wanted and I taught her strategies on how to go about it. Uh, she found a job. So from a supervisor level, she became uh, an assistant uh, director okay. and she became a director. Uh, so she became an assistant director in like three or four months. Then she became an assistant director. And then um, after a few months of that, she sent me a text that in uh, a year and a half, she is going to replace um, her vice president. Ooh. And that just, <laughs> I mean, that was a tear jerking moment for me, you know, because we women, uh, I mean, every individual, you know, not just women, every man, every woman, we have so much, so much potential that mm. we don't even tap into 5% of it because we have all these limiting beliefs and self doubt and lack of confidence. And that just, I mean, that story happened and I felt I am on the right path. And, you know, since then I've been helping women to, um, you know, negotiate the maximum possible salary. Um, you know, even if they did not have a lot of experience, I have helped them really uh, get a seat in the boardroom. I have have them uh, get promoted uh, skipping levels, you know, mm. from director to vice president without having to go through the senior director uh, position and women from, um, you know, purely technical or subject matter expertise to actually become managers and leaders. So That's amazing. this is, this is, I mean, this is what I love. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell right now, because right now you're glowing, you know. I, I can always tell when a person is walking their path, right, the true path, because it's it's hard it's hard to fake uh, being authentic, right? It's hard to fake being real. And as you're speaking, you're glowing, right? I'm looking at your mannerisms, right? I'm looking at your body language. Like everything about you right now is just, I am in my truth. I am walking my truth right now. I'm I'm living the lifestyle that I was meant to live. And I'm loving it. I, I'm, I'm feeding off you right now, Dr. Garf. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, this is what I teach my clients also to be authentic. You don't have to be somebody else. You know, be proud of your skin color. Don't mm. worry about your accent because the value that you bring to the table is so much more than anything else. So if you Indeed. can speak about it, you're going to go up, you know, just like that. <laughs> yeah, but key word. You have to speak up, though. That's that's the key yeah. word, right? <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> so, so, Dr. Garf, so right now, you know, I know somebody might be listening or watching right now, right, um, that is going through something similar, right? They are either a minority descent or South Asian woman or man, and they want to speak up, but they don't have the words, right? They have all the accolades, all the degrees, mm -hmm. but yet and still, they are timid, right? They are, um, they're shy. They, they don't. They know they they have it in them, but they don't know how to, how to step up. Mm -hmm. What's the first step you'll tell this person when it, when it comes to getting out of the shell? The first step is get help. And I made that mistake of not reaching out for help. And I took the long, winding, lonely path to figure out uh, what I want to be and to be financially successful where I want to be. You know, as immigrants, um, we, have, we have a lot of responsibilities. You know, most of the times we are the first ones to come from our home country to a new country. Uh, you know, the initial few years go into converting. Oh, my goodness. One dollar is what? 70 rupees. Wow, that's a lot of money. So, you know, we try to live within our means. Uh, we have a family where we send back uh, money to. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's it's difficult, right? It's difficult because the moment you come here is not that you suddenly start, uh, you know, making a lot of money or going to school. And, uh, you know, then you get a job or if you come here for a job, you have generally undersold yourself. So you're mm -hmm. not making a lot of money uh, either. So that keeps us into the scarcity mindset that, oh, you know, if I could get, you know, if I could just watch YouTube videos and, 
look at some literature, you know, refer to Dr. Google, I'll find uh, as many answers. But, you know, Google confidence, you have like millions of hits, which one applies to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So getting out of that scarcity mindset and believing that I need to spend money to make money and getting that help so that, you know, you can start earning what you truly deserve. You can grow in the company. You can be seen as a leader and you're setting a great example for your children because I get to speak with so many moms who tell me that, you know, I feel so guilty because I'm not being a good mother to my child. I feel like a failure, not only as a professional, but also as a mom, because I keep snapping at my children. I expect them to understand that I'm 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 busy, so they should figure out, you know, how to keep themselves busy and whatnot. And it breaks my heart. It shouldn't be like this, because when your child uh, grows older, when you are in your 60s and 70s, they they would wish for you to spend that money on yourself and become happy and and get get um you know get a hold <laughs> get you know uh, get control command your career than treating me this way right yeah. so the first step is you know stop bsing yourself that you will find the answer yourself and yes of course if you have the luxury of time you know 15 20 years to figure it out on your own absolutely go for it but in today's world, nobody has that time. So think of getting help as investing in yourself. And it will pay off multiple fold in so many ways. Yes, indeed. This is why coaching is so, so important. It helps to it helps you to get past hurdles, right? And bypass other obstacles, you know? And Dr. Dr. Garv, I appreciate you, right? I, I appreciate the, the stance you're taking on helping um, South Asian individuals and the minority individuals, even just people in general, right? I'm not even going to limit it, limit it to those those groups of people. Um, you you did the work, right, on yourself first, mm-hmm. and then you decided to step up and bring others along, which is amazing, right? So I commend you for for that. Thank right? you. You're doing an amazing work, and I'm going to ask you: Do you have any? new books or any new programs that you're currently um, working on right now or that's currently out that you could share with us? Um, so many ideas. Right now, I have only ideas. Um, okay. One of the things that I want to write about is uh, procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody feels it's a time issue. It's a time problem, time management problem. Uh, but it is really not. Uh, procrastination is... Um, creating that um, stressful situation for yourself that you have been used to mm. since your upbringing. So you wait for that last minute to, to get into that stress so that you feel that high, right? And then at the last minute, you feel that, oh, I'm going to deliver. You know, I'm going to do the best uh, job. And it happens that way, right? But then it's not worth it because you're so stressed out so I want to, um, you know, spend some time on that. And then regarding the program, you know, I've been doing a one-on-one coaching for quite some time, but um, I have launched uh, from the last two years uh, this group program okay. where, um, you know, women get to work with other women. You know, there's, there's this, we have group coaching calls where women come and share their wins, uh, their challenges, and everybody's there to support each other. And in addition, I also have one-on-one calls with them. So it's a combination of group and one-on-one calls. And um, that has been really, really, really um, amazing for my clients and for me because it is so gratifying. Because, you know, when you are on this... um, journey where you feel you're lonely, you lack confidence, you're not seen, uh, you're not heard, uh, you get passed over from, it's a very lonely place. You cannot share it with anybody. And, uh, you know, a lot of women share it with their spouses, but here's the thing, right? Spouses are not equipped to be your career coach. They're not your career counselors. And Mm. they, they have their different trajectory, 
of mm-hmm. career the way they look at things is very different than how you look at things so um you know please please don't burden them <laughs> with your <laughs> career challenges um so it's it's very lonely right uh it is almost like you're living on an island worrying about thing trying to keep a happy face in front of your children in front of your spouse um and and you just live in your own world which causes a lot of stress you cannot sleep at night uh there are health issues you're gaining weight it's just too much to have to deal with all by yourself so when these women see other women in the program who needed a proven plan uh, an expert mentor and are becoming massively confident it's just magical right it's like wow i can also be there there you go and women who are ahead they come back and they ask questions which uh, the women who are at the beginning of the program haven't even thought about but they say wow thank you you asked this question because you know i wouldn't have thought uh, to ask that but it completely applies to my situation so there's a lot of learning lot of support lot of celebration so um uh, you know the I, i'm i'm really really uh, you know proud of this program and it's just amazing how my clients are um getting amazing results because of that it sounds like a phenomenal community that you've created it is it is <laughs> awesome dr garf i have one last question for you right how may i serve you thomas i mean what you are doing is so amazing you're so amazing i mean i heard your story thomas and i was like i'm so glad that there are people like you um you know and and you are you you work with executives also and 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 the journey that you take them on right self care uh you know making their health a priority getting rid of the stress and uh, um you know leading so that they they can lead with more power i mean that's amazing that's amazing um how you can serve me <laughs> i mean you I, i just feel that you know as coaches you know it it is a responsibility to help as many people as possible you know the fact that we are chatting with each other you invited me um here you know to speak to your audience i mean it's just our way of uh, giving out our message and um, helping so you 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 you've already served me <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome i'm glad that i've served you dr garf and let's let's com- let's continue to keep in contact cuz i love your energy i love your passion and you know I, like i said i love the fact that you're doing such great work right um i commend you and whatever i could do further I'm a phone call away, a text away, a LinkedIn message <laughs> message away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to continuing to stay in touch. Awesome, awesome. So, to all of our podcast listeners and viewers, thanks for coming today and letting us your ears and your eyeballs. So, if anyone would like to um share this episode because there are so many people that could benefit from it, share it. Share it, share it, share it. and also connect with Dr. Garf. Dr. Garf, um where where can um where can the viewers listeners uh connect with you if they want to you know connect with you or join your program, where can they go for that? Yeah. They can uh they can go to my website www.unshackledcareerwoman.com. They can also find me on LinkedIn with the same name unshackledcareerwoman.com and on LinkedIn I have a free training that anyone can sign up for. so take advantage of that free training and uh, you know get the nuggets that you need if you're struggling in your career uh, those are the two ways send me a message on linkedin uh, or you can send me a message via my website awesome awesome dr garf it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure so everyone that's listening make sure to tune in for next week's episode continue to work on yourself show love to others and take care see you guys next week cheers we're out